Headway Cambridge Year is a charity which supports people after an acquired brain injury that could be socially, cognitively or physically. We do this in a safe and secure environment in our hub services and also within our community. So this is our second uh, project funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. We wanted to do brain injury because we've all had brain injury. It's the 100th anniversary of the armistice for World War One, so we felt it was really important to to mark that in some way. I was interested in signing up to the project because I've always been interested in military history. History has always been my favourite subject, even when I was at school. I had relatives, who, a grandfather who was a stretcher bearer on the Western Front. So, <clears throat> When I found out it was brain injury, I've had a brain injury, I'd like to compare the two. To see how head injuries were treated back then compared to now. The group themselves actually went to the National Archives and the UCL Hospital of Neurology to see if we could find out about how brain injuries were treated, who treated them, whether there was anyone in Cambridge that had brain injuries as a result of the First World War, and if we could find out anything about them. They also wanted to know more about the, the methods of treatment, the kinds of medicines, the surgical techniques, anything to do with the actual treatment of head injuries. We got to look through these amazing medical notes. So they saw how the, the soldiers were treated when they were back home at the base hospitals. It was quite a privilege to be allowed access to that material, but it did feel slightly invasive. You know, that this was very personal material. It was the war unlike any other before. The first thing we found was that the, they were sent into battle with inadequate headgear, to put it mildly. They had helmets made out of webbing, totally ineffective against shrapnel. People that were in the First World War, um, they all had 50-50 chance of surviving. Oh, it's quite unbelievable, really. Somebody who had shrapnel was told to go away, sit down and have a cigarette, put it off together. What a disconnect there was between the people sending troops to the front <laughs> and the troops. They must have suffered so much of poor people. Their accounts would have probably been treated with disbelief. They're yellow, they're yellow, that's all. The medical profession was on a very steep learning curve. You're rehabilitated better than you were then. Better drugs, better operational facilities, and better treatment. You're not treated like a leper as much as you were then. The people at the beginning of the war must have had an awful time, and yet we've managed and managed and managed to come back to the current day, and there's an amazing service. Head injury, what happens? A CT scan and various other tests. None of those were available in the First World War. So that was the research side of it. So that's one part of the project. The next part of the project was this idea of trying to get this information out there. Uh, so the research is being used for several different outcomes. Lee Chambers at 105 Radio is creating a podcast based on some of the research that we've done and some of the outcomes as well. I came on board to do a podcast to publicise the research that the group had uncovered so we'd have a permanent record of what they'd found and the experts take on that. So we've got our Anglia Ruskin students um, designing these amazing posters that are going to be on the buses throughout Cambridge. They really capture the essence of the project and what people went through in, in World War I. And they're really different as well. They're, they're different styles and, and are really engaging. It was a very interesting project all the way through, um, particularly um, with the students and their commitment to the, jo to the job in hand. I decided to get involved because it sounded like something really different and the chance to work with um, clients. And I thought it sounded like quite a, a harsh subject matter and the challenge of that uh, grabbed my attention. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting 
a subject uh, to, to, um, to work on. I just get straight out of my head onto paper in thumbnails and that was where I began to get the idea for the grenade reflecting the brain. Uh, so I looked at lots of, lots of reference photos, playing around with shadows and lighting, creating a small image of a profile of a soldier and then having smaller figures looking like they were piecing back together the brain. And I want to really focus on the aspect of the war with the hail of bullets going through the soldier that was going to be the quote. I looked at um, combining the imagery of a head, a brain and a trench and this was my initial sketch showing a head with a crater of the brain. Uh, what I've enjoyed most about the experience is the concepts and trying to communicate what they had researched in a kind of simplistic way. I've also enjoyed working in a, in a group with the other students. Working with the clients too and getting their feedback um, on each of our meetings. Just a lot more information about War One itself that I did not know before. Stagecoach buses will have um, posters on the back of them um, about impact, about the project, and also inside the buses with a bit more information about it. Seeing how the illustration students created these amazing responses to their brief has been really exciting. My role was to engage uh, with school to enthuse and encourage and to produce a show. World War One's an area I'm quite passionate about, so that really enthused me. Netherhall School are going to be producing a film, which is what they came up with, and have an inserted piece into the performance. And then Coleridge a Community College were happy to look at the work and research that the Headway clients had come up with. We were really interested in being involved in something creative and different and innovative. And they're now creating scenes um, from that research, but putting their own spin to it. They've taken the initial information that was sent through to us and we've began to dramatise that and turn that into short performances in small groups exploring different areas and different impact that head injuries had. There's more learning than, than meets the eye, I think, it, with this. It's been a real opportunity to bring history to life, to actually understand some of the clients from Headway and how they live day to day and how their lives have been changed through head injuries. So I think it's developed their empathy, their understanding of a time in history, and it's given them an opportunity also to go and perform in a professional uh, theatre for the final performance. For me, the most rewarding part of this project has been seeing the clients gain new skills. That confidence that has come out of being involved in this project is very special. And it's not about them being defined by their brain injury and how that's impacted on their lives. Just building on things like the teamwork skills, communication. And the collaboration with other organisations is really inspiring as well. Everybody's just getting on board and, and being really inspired by it. Um, it was worth doing, very much worth, worth doing, and what I enjoyed most was the buses. <laughs> I'm ho hooked on buses. <laughs> I like uh, the whole project, I really enjoyed. Researching something that was related to the fact that I myself went through a brain injury was fascinating. You know? I felt we did it. We were in control, we did it all. We, we commissioned people like the filmmaker, Joseph Malzahl. But I really liked all of us working together. All the camaraderie, and uh, we've all been a quite a nice group together. And that's why I think it's been wonderful. And, it, and also it's a good cause.